Hello. In today's Doc Votion, we're examining the doctrine of justification. This is the teaching that God has already declared the whole world to be righteous in Christ, and that by grace for Christ's sake, God justifies all who believe in Christ. That's what the Apostle Paul wrote about in Romans chapter 3, verses 23 through 24 and 28. This is sometimes referred to as the marrow of theology. Great name. Here we go. For there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. For we hold that one is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. Now some Reformed churches teach that all God requires of us is that we be as righteous as we can, that we give it the old college try, do as many good deeds as possible, try to be a good person, they say, and God is sure to accept you. But that's not what the Bible says. That's not what God's law requires. In his law, God demands a perfect righteousness. To fall short just a bit is to completely fail. Our verse says, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. In God's eyes, the one who hates is as guilty as the one who murders. The one who has an impure thought is as guilty as the adulterer. If there is one sin in your background, then you've broken God's law. And you may as well give up on the idea of getting into heaven that way. It simply won't work. If you want to have eternal life, then you've got to have a perfect righteousness. The righteousness of God himself. Nothing less will do. Because we're sinners, of course, there's no way we can provide it for ourselves. Only God can give it. The doctrine of justification is the teaching that this righteousness of God, a righteousness apart from the law, is available. But for whom? Who are the lucky ones who will get it? Whom has God chosen to receive this precious gift? Well, have you ever heard of this name, Dr. Frederick Banting? Ring any bells? He won the 1921 Nobel Prize for Medicine when he developed insulin which proved to be an immediate and absolute cure for diabetes. But insulin was very difficult to manufacture in those early days, and only a limited amount was available at first. That meant that even though there was a life-saving cure for their illness, some patients still died because there wasn't enough of the precious liquid to go around. How terrible it would be if the cure for sin was like that. What if the righteousness required for salvation was only available in limited quantities and only a few people could obtain it? But no, Paul tells us that the righteousness of God is for everyone. The good news of our text of this verse is that because of Christ's redemption, everyone can have it. Yes, Paul admits we are sinners, all of us. And yes, we have fallen far short of God's requirements. But the doctrine of justification shifts the focus From the law to the gospel. No longer do we hear the ringing commands of what we must do. Now we hear only the sweet music of what the Lord has done for us. We are justified. That is, we are declared not guilty freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. We were the slaves of sin. We were the prisoners of Satan, bound inevitably to spend eternity in hell with him. But Jesus refused to let us language in captivity. He redeemed us. He paid the ransom price required to buy us back from sin and Satan and hell. That price was high, of course. We know that. Higher than any amount that could be paid in dollars and cents. Peter reminds us, You were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish, and without spot. That's 1 Peter 1, verse 18 and 19. On the cross of Calvary, that cursed Roman instrument of torture, the innocent Lamb of God offered his life in exchange for ours. He who knew no sin became sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. 2 Corinthians 5, 21. So you see, this doctrine of justification, it is the central article of, by which all Christian doctrine and the Christian church itself stands and falls. It is the apex of all Christian theology. In Christ, the righteousness of God is available to everyone. No exceptions. The antidote for sin is there 
for anyone who cares to have it. That includes you, my good friend. Christ has paid the ransom price for you. All that remains for you to do is bring your sins to Jesus. Receive his forgiveness by faith. And that's what faith is, really. Not some kind of good work that we do, but just a hand placed on your heart by the working of the Holy Spirit in God's word. The hand of faith which reaches out to receive the gift of God. In light of this wonderful doctrine of justification, who can now accuse you of sin? Jesus Christ paid for each of your sins on that cross. Who can tell you that your righteousness isn't what it should be? Jesus Christ gives us perfect righteousness, and it's that perfect righteousness, my Christian friend, that's going to get you and me into heaven. So we can kick up our heels and rejoice, can't we? You have every right in the world to join the hymnist in exalting, Who can condemn me now for surely? The Lord is nigh who justifies. No hell I fear, and thus securely with Jesus I to heaven rise. And that's what the doctrine of justification is all about. Amen.